Understanding database branching and deploy requests on PlanetScale. Hey everyone, my name is Brian Morrison. I'm on the developer education team here at PlanetScale. In this video, we're going to explore branches and deploy requests and see how these features can be used to enhance your developer workflow. This is the second video in a series I'm creating in order to help new PlanetScale users get onboarded into the system as efficiently as possible. If you're interested in watching the first entry where we explore the PlanetScale dashboard and create a database, check the corner of this video for a link to that one. Before we hop into the dashboard to explore branches, let's first take a moment and understand why we'd want to use them in the first place. In PlanetScale, branches are copies of your database schema. They are completely separate from each other, so you can make changes to one without affecting the other. In PlanetScale, there are two types of branches. There are production branches and non-production branches. There's a couple of key differences between the two. In production branches, no DDL or data definition language statements can be executed. These are the statements that allow you to modify the schema of your database, such as creating tables, columns, views, etc. The console is also disabled by default, although we can enable that in the settings. This is just some extra protection to make sure no accidental changes are made to the data in your production branches. Last but not least, production branches have increased resiliency, which means there are multiple copies of that specific database branch within the chosen region of the cloud provider. Non-production branches are where you would typically experiment with changes to the schema. So that data definition language, the statements that are used to modify the schema are openly accepted. There's also no extra resiliency, so you don't get those regional copies to protect you from outages. Deploy requests are the mechanism used to merge database branches together. They can be thought of like pull requests in a typical Git development workflow. You create a pull request to merge changes from one branch to another, whereas in PlanetScale, you would create a deploy request to merge changes from one database branch to another. So now let's understand why you would want this kind of feature in your database. Most applications have at least two environments, a production environment where active users work within the application and a development environment where developers extend the application and can experiment with changes. PlanScale is built with this in mind, which is why branching is such a fundamental feature of the platform. A typical branching strategy could go something like this. Within PlanetScale, you have two database branches, your main branch and your dev branch. Let's say a developer decides to extend the application by adding a field to a form. Following along with the hotels concept that was built in the previous video, let's assume the developer wants to add a description field to a hotel. The developer would need to add a field to the code, but also add a column in the database to store the new data. After the code has been updated and the database dev branch has been updated, they would create a pull request in the preferred Git management system and a deploy request in PlanetScale. This allows other developers to review the changes and decide whether or not those changes should be applied. Once the pull request in Git is merged and the deploy request in PlanetScale is merged, the production version of the database has all of the schema changes safely applied with zero downtime and the users can continue to use the application with no outages. Now that you understand the why behind branching and deploy requests, let's hop over to the PlanetScale dashboard and take a look at how to use them. Okay, so on screen, I have the same database that was created in the previous video, the travel DB, which has a hotels, uh, a hotels table, as well as those four columns, the ID, the address, the name and the stars. So right in the middle of the page, you can see this alert that says the database has no production branches. The first thing we have to do is we can promote our existing main branch, which is the default branch to production. Uh, go ahead and click on promote a branch to production. Um, it will pre-select main because that's the only one we have. And then we're going to go ahead and click promote branch. Now let's create a new branch. Let's create that dev branch we talked about in the intro of the video. So let's go ahead and click on branches, click new branch, and let's go ahead and give this branch the name of dev. You can see within this, if you have multiple branches, you can select, uh, you could select a different branch as your main, just like you would inside of a Git uh, workflow. And then you can also place your dev branch into a different region if you absolutely wanted to. We'll just stick with US East one for now. I'll go ahead and click create branch, which is going to start off the process of creating the branch. This does take a few minutes because essentially it is a duplicate copy of the database. So I'm going to pause the video and return here once it's done. So when the branch is finished initializing, um, you will see right in this main landing page, you can manage your deploy request. This is kind of an indication that we're, we're up and ready to go. So let's go ahead and take a look at the schema. And we should see here is our, our same uh, hotels table that exists in the main branch. Now I'm going to head over to console. And we're going to extend this by adding a description field, just like is described in the intro. intro. Uh, so I'll say alter table, add, alter table hotels, add description. And that is going to be a var car or string of 500 characters. Hit enter. We can see this completed. Let's go back into schema. And we can see here is our description field that has been added. 
So before we create that deploy request to merge our changes in, let's actually switch over to the main branch just so I can show you that within the schema of this branch, uh, we don't have that description, uh, which kind of reinforces that this is a completely separate database copy. I'll flip back into dev. So in the overview tab towards the bottom, there's a section here that says create a deploy request, which is where you would create your deploy request. Um, we're pre-selected to main since that's the base branch. And we can also add uh, comments here, just like you would inside of a pull request. So I will uh, put a comment here of add description field to hotels. And let's go ahead and click create deploy request. So if we scroll down a little bit here, you could see it's checking to see if the deploy request is deployable. And it's basically what it's going to do is it's going to it's going to compare the schema changes that need to be applied to the main production branch and then tell you whether or not there's any kind of dangerous operations that are going to happen or if it needs to be changed at all. Um, on the right hand side, you could see there's also an uh, alter table. There's one alter table because that's what we're doing. We can click on this button here to view the schema changes. And we can see uh, it's very similar to like a, a, a diff in your Git system. Uh, it will show you that we're going to add the description field uh, to the schema in the main branch. Um, before we go ahead and deploy these changes, I also wanted to comment this button here that says close deploy request. Um, only one deploy request can be active at any given time. So for whatever reason you need to make changes or you need to kind of scrap what's going on here, clicking that close deploy request will uh, close it out without actually merging any of the changes. Uh, we should be good to go, so let's go ahead and click Deploy Changes. You can see the changes are submitted. Uh, this will take a moment for it to merge everything together. Okay, and once this is done, we can see the status of the deploy request has been changed to deployed, um, and then it was deployed uh, successfully. So now if we head back into branches and then go to the main branch, which is the one we just merged changes into, let's take a look at that schema tab again, and we can see there's that description field that we just added. You should now have a good understanding on how to use branching and deploy requests to strengthen your developer workflow and safely make changes to a production database. In the next video, we're going to explore the various options you have to connect to those branches using code and third-party clients. I'll see you then.